Hi friends, it's finally time. We're gonna check the grapes today and see if they're ready to harvest. Join us. So what we're gonna do is, what, take little samples of several or explain to me what we do on this part. We're gonna take out of the center of several clusters. All on this on row the, or vine or all on, over the whole vineyard? On it, on several spots. Yeah. And these are all Tempranias. And here's another Tempranilla on this side. And we're just getting a little sampling of several. But they're really hot right now. After we we have got to move to the rest of them. These are just some fill-ins from vines that die. It was like 102 in my car, and on the Weather Channel, I think it hit 100, maybe 101 officially. So these grapes are way too hot to test their sugar at that temperature. So we pick a few, and we're just going to take them into the air conditioning and let them cool off. Is that right? Yep, let them cool down to 70 degrees or so. And then we're gonna test the sugar level. With a refractometer. Let's see if they're ready to pick. Cool, so we'll catch up with you folks once we get these grapes cooled down. Still out gathering the samplings and came upon this Definitely bird damage. It's netted, but it's so close to the net. They could have just landed out here and eaten through. And there seems to be kind of a hole down here where we gathered the net together that a bird could have gotten in. Now, a lot of times when they get in a hole, they can't always get out. And we'll find a trapped bird in here, but uh, we don't see a trapped bird. So they either found their way out or they just hung on the side of the net and ate through. But if we didn't have the nets on, every single cluster out here would look like this. Because those birds, man, I don't know if they have a YouTube channel or a Facebook account, but they can tell birds in five surrounding counties that there's grapes ready over here, and here they all come. Good reason that we have to do the netting. This is the inside of our grape-making room. Um, it's a small apartment that we had finished out years ago to live in while we built the larger barn dominium. But um, after we moved into the larger barn dominium, this small apartment turned into our winemaking area. As you can see, there's various and sundry winemaking things all over this room, which we'll go over them slowly throughout the course of this. And um, did want to show you this. We ordered a kit without growing the grapes because I've really come to like some white wines lately and decided to just dabble and, and make a white wine from a kit. And that is a great way to start making wine for any of you interested. Just order the kit of juices and all of the additives online as a kit. And it just kind of lets you dabble and play and see the process without, you know, biting the bullet and doing the whole big thing. Um, anyway, so this is the area and uh, we're just getting it ready right now steps are to drink a beer, up, evidently. Crush up our grapes. Crushing them up all together, a sampling from several of the different rows and the different vines. Pretty much two grapes off each vine. Bailey's out there barking like, uh, I want AC too. We're just getting out all of the pulp and squishing them and we want juice, right, for the refractometer? Right. Now to help with the cooling process, we're gonna put it in the refrigerator. And wait. My fingers are sticky, so they have... They've got sugar content. Oh, yeah. Good deal. Okay, so you haven't put any grape juice on there right now, but what is it you're doing? You add some distilled water 
to check to make sure it's on zero. It's like a calibration. And it's on zero. Okay, let me see that thing. I don't know you look it. through there, you put the juice. I don't know if you can see it. No, I can't see it. I just wanted to show them the thing. And you put the juice on that plate right there. You open this, yes. Okay, but and now it's, this we is what we have is a portable refractometer. Oh, do you remember how much this was? Oh, they're cheap. They're like $50. 50? I thought it was only like 10 or 15. No, it's not Okay, it's like 50. Okay, anyway, so portable refractometer. And then now we're going to pour our... Just some of the juice. Cool down juice on the slide. Close this and make sure that it covers the whole surface. No air bubbles. We're good. Hold it to the light. That's what it does is refracts the light. This light's not bright enough, so we have to move it here. To a barking dog. Brighter out here, it's not natural sunlight. Does that matter? Does it does it need to be it just needs to be bright enough to see the scale? Okay. And then it gives you a reading inside, right? It, it gives you a reading. We're only about 22. Whoa. That's... Which is white wine. Oh, I thought we needed it to be 20. No, 20, 22 is white wine. We want 24, 25, 26 for hours. So we have a few days left. So when I told y'all 20 earlier, I was way wrong. Um, that's for white wines. The, we wanted ours 20, tell me again, 24, 26, 26 is, makes it sugary enough. And it isn't there yet, so um, we're saved from doing it tomorrow. But we will be picking this weekend most likely. Um, we're helping another vineyard out on Saturday pick their Tempranillas, so we'll probably be picking ours on Sunday. But not quite ready yet, but that's how we can tell. Thanks for watching.